I don't know Baby, what I do On this earth Without you We all live We all die Not the end Not the time The sun comes up and seasons change But through it all Love remains I don't know Burning flame Hope lives on And love Hey, this is Ramon, Channel Alpha 4, and um, this is a response video to, I believe it's Godless Cranium. I always get his name wrong. You've got nothing. Beg for mercy. Scream my name! Anyway, he asked, what contributions has religion given to the modern world that cannot be replaced by secular uh, society or secular uh, means. Hope I'm wording that correctly. Uh, you're not. I asked what beneficial aspects of religion can't be replaced by secular means. I also left the exact wording in the description box so that people could easily reference it without watching the entire video a second time. I mean, not that the video is long or anything. It weighs in at 2 minutes and 42 seconds. There's really no excuse for getting the question wrong. But okay, what have you got for me? Um, and I'll be honest with you, when he first made this video back in November of last year, I actually was subscribed to his channel. Was? Past tense. But around that time, Armored Skeptic and a few of the other very popular skeptics like Thunderfoot kind of had like these little like mini self-destruct things happening in their uh, in like their own personal drama. So I unsub unsubscribed from a bunch of skeptic channels at about that time. Um, so let me get this straight. Other people had drama problems, which I didn't comment on or take part in. And so you unsubscribed from them and me. Look, I'm not going to lose any sleep at night if you don't like my content or don't want to subscribe. Whatever the reason, but the excuse you're offering up here is pretty weak. But I didn't make a response video to that for two reasons. One is because the question just didn't interest me. It wasn't a good question. Uh, in fact, I have been searching YouTube for good questions, uh, especially for my branch of theology, uh, Catholicism. So you've been searching YouTube for good questions, but you can't even be bothered to make sure you're answering the right question? You've got to be kidding me. And what do you mean by it's not a good question? It's an excellent question, and one that every theist who has tried has completely failed to answer. More than half of them, you included, can't even manage to answer the question I originally asked. And the other two reasons why I didn't respond at the time is one is because this channel was still mostly a martial arts channel. And two is that I didn't really have a well-formed answer. But I do have an answer now, but first I gotta go through my complaint against the question. No, you, you really don't. <sighs> but okay, if you insist. Which is the question is missing the point. Uh, it just misses the point of religion. Religion is about serving God. That's it. Um, it's not about anything else. It's about what God wants, not about what people want. It's not about society. So then you admit your religion has no benefit to society? I mean, if you want to wave the white flag that quickly, I'm not going to stop you. I know that your religion can't offer anything of value to society that can't be replaced by secular means. I also don't believe for one second that you know what a supreme being wants. You're as much in the dark as the next theist. So, um, when you ask a question like that, it negates what religion is about. The type of question that Cranium is asking is just not the kind of question that 
religion is interested in. That's a load of bull. If you don't think religion and religious institutions don't want to control public policy, societal norms, and even meddle in people's sex lives, you've been asleep at the wheel, my friend. Religion is very much interested in society, and always has been. The Catholic Church, the very institution you say you're a part of, has tried to influence public policy when it comes to perceived social ills, abortion rights, same-sex marriage laws, and a myriad of other policies. Your Pope has publicly stated he hopes to influence politics. For example, take this from the Catholic News Agency. Quote, The authentic face of politics and its reason for being, Francis said, is an invaluable service to the good of the whole community, and that is why the Church's social doctrine regards it as a noble form of charity. End quote. I don't know how you can possibly be a Catholic and not see that the church is all about influencing society, and it most definitely tries to influence public policy. When you're asking what contributions has religion of any kind given to society that modern society couldn't replace or do without, uh, you're missing the part where you had to go through that religious thought to get to our current thought. I'm not saying individual scientists, I'm saying society and humanity as a whole did believe these things at one time. And the ideas that we have now sprang from those ideas. Right, so even if I grant you that point, this is still an absurd argument. It's like me saying that we had to learn how to build mud huts before we could build skyscrapers. Therefore, I guess we have to keep building, maintaining, and funding mud huts. Or, we had to go through the process of learning alchemy was a bunch of nonsense before we could learn chemistry. Therefore, let's keep teaching alchemy in universities. Like alchemy, your religion is nonsense. Even if I agreed with your basic premise that we needed religion to reach the sort of society we've been able to achieve so far, and I don't know that I would, but let's just say I do for argument's sake, your argument still fails. And those ideas, those monotheistic Christian ideas or whatever, you know, uh, Judea, Judaism, Islam, whatever. Those ideas sprang from polytheistic and um, pagan ideas, and those came from, you know, uh, tribalistic and, and animistic ideas, and, and just keeps on going further back. The fact that you can figure out that there were God beliefs before your own, which predate Christianity by thousands of years, and still not realize that your religion is made up nonsense is amazing. If your god existed, it didn't bother to let anyone know for the first 196,000 years or so. People were born, died horribly before they were 40 from diseases that modern science has since eradicated, without saying a peep. Nothing was written down about this creator of the universe. Your creator did nothing to better the plight of humanity. No one was supposedly forced to die for sins. Then one day about 4,000 years ago, this deity decided now was the time to communicate with its creation. Instead of offering anything of value, such as the cure for cancer or something equally as valuable, it inspired a book of contradictions that has sustained and caused wars, inspired terrorism, and created factions within the Christian community because they can't seem to come to a consensus about what this book means or what their god wants. This is the kind of nonsense you have to believe to be a Christian. Spring from might be actually the wrong term. These ideas are polemic and a response to the previous way of thinking. So you have the type of tribalistic way of thinking where forces of nature and, and such are at the whims of, of certain, let's call them fates or energies, you know, volcanoes, hurricanes, that kind of stuff. And so you have ideas that oppose those ideas come up and say, so you're not at the whim. You can control it by doing these things, you know, these certain rituals. Right, so you fight superstition with more superstition. We now understand volcanoes, etc. No more need for your religion. Okay, so you learn to take control. And then those ideas then get opposed, and then polemics get written against those ideas, or stories that are polemics get told against those ideas. So you go from uh, kind of a polytheistic ideas of uh, appeasement, to then um, you get um, monotheistic ideas of, let's say, uh, personal betterment and the best ways to have a society and the best ways to interact with each other and the best rules for each other. And then those ideas then 
get changed and you have people who spring up from those religions and they say okay well those ideas those older versions of those ideas aren't working anymore because there's a broader picture we've suddenly run into rome or run into greece or run into persia what are you talking about right now what does any of this have to do with my original question? You said earlier that religion doesn't concern itself with worldly affairs, but here you're admitting it does, and you've run into the Rome or the Greece of this era. It's called secular philosophy, and the ideas found there are aligned with reality. No matter which direction you look, secular thinking and secular ethics are fully capable of replacing religious thinking and religious morality. We can use reason, statistics, and empathy to plot a course forward. We no longer need to rely on shamans or men in funny hats to tell us how to live. We no longer need to put our trust in faith. A lot of the great scientists were Catholics, right? That's like one of the like really bad straw man arguments against this, against uh, uh, Cranium's qu uh, question. And that's just, that's a bad argument. And that's, that I kind of feel like that was the argument he was hoping to knock down was that like really crappy argument. Then you clearly don't know me very well. I made that video because I sincerely wanted to see if someone had a good answer to the challenge. I was attempting to test my worldview, and so far it has produced mediocre results. And that's putting it kindly. I don't make videos with a straw man in mind. Then what is it that religion contributes? Well, I would say religion of any kind contributes a sense of mysticism. Not just a sense of wonder, but a sense of inner, of deeper inner meaning and deeper inner purpose. And I don't mean, oh, an atheist can't have purpose. Watch my In Defense of atheist, Atheism videos if you want to hear my thoughts on, on that. No, what I'm talking about is that there are certain ideas of, uh, of the animus, of the electronic signals in the mind and energy in the body that we would call the soul. Why would you call the electrical currents in the brain a soul? Everything you just mentioned there had a natural material cause. There's no need to attribute anything supernatural to it. And as you kindly pointed out, you don't need religion to experience a deeper inner meaning or purpose. Basically, you don't need religion. You can get all of the benefits without believing in things that are demonstrably not true. The, the personality, the persona, the thing that develops through developing a rational mind, um, those uh, personality traits that are unique to you as an individual, to explore those things in a way that is both comforting and easy for a lay person to understand is uniquely religious. Um, no, it's not. You can do all of that without religion. I'm more than capable of self-reflection. I'm also capable of exploring my personality and even the reasons why I might manifest those personality traits. None of that is uniquely religious. And no, you can't take credit for it either. Yes, you can become an academic and spend your life learning about psychology and sociology. But at that point, you're no longer at the lay level. Um, you have to learn all that. While religion gives you kind of a base level that you can tell these stories to a child and they will understand them. <laughs> wow. So religion offers a childlike understanding of the world. <laughs> Got it. The meaning changes as you age and with your references, but the level, the base level is there. And these stories, these archetypal stories, uh, relay meaning that even an immature mind can get and that a mature mind and a developed mind can then dissect and, and reevaluate and draw more meaning out of. And that is something uniquely religious. No, no, it's not. I did that in high school English. I didn't need religion to do it either. It sounds like you've been watching too much Jordan Peterson babble. What you're referring to here reminds me of this meme. This is what Jordan Peterson does all the time. He takes these stories and attributes meaning to them that the original authors likely didn't intend. You can do this to any book. Hell, you can do it to a comic book, which I showed in my parody video using the Hulk. This is not unique to religion, and you could find books that show far more compassion, less violence, and better writing to work with if you wanted to babble about archetypes and pull meaning where none exists. Um, I say uniquely religious because you can say, well, okay, yeah, but Shakespeare's great and that's not real. 
but there's truth in it. Okay, there are truth in the stories, and the more truthful the story is, the more meaningful the story becomes. And I know you can say, well, what about abstract art, and what about um, farce and all of that? Fair point, but not really, um, not really constructive to the question. Super constructive. Like I said earlier, you can do it to pretty much anything. You also don't have to believe in things that aren't true to enjoy Shakespeare or to analyze his writing. So what religion gives to society and gives to individuals is a sense of the mystical, which is something that science currently in its current form is doing its hardest to smash out. It's trying, many, especially many atheists, are trying to eliminate the mystical elements of science. Not the mystery elements, the mystical elements. And I think that's a sad thing. It would be nice if you defined what you mean by mystical. If you're using it to say that we can feel a sense of mystery or awe, then I don't know many atheists that would deny that you can. If you're pushing some sort of supernatural agenda, then many of us would push back. Uh, if you are someone who is inclined to believe those things, Science cannot give you an understanding of the soul. Science cannot give you an understanding of that which is not understandable. If something isn't understandable, then nothing, including religion, can offer you understanding on that topic. That's the very definition of not being understandable. Saying something isn't understandable, but then offering an explanation of the concept you're saying isn't understandable is a preposterous thing to do. So, um... Like I said, higher level, understanding of God, understanding of the soul. Lower level, it inspires ideas that you wouldn't get otherwise. Higher level nonsense, lower level nonsense. None of the concepts you've mentioned here can't be replaced by secular means. However, thanks for your response. That's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching. Take care and cheers.